Okay, hi, this is your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and <clears throat> we're going to be simplifying radicals. Okay, the square root of 20 times the square root of 20 is going to be 20, right? Why? Well, aside from the fact that the calculator would tell us, the square root of 20 times the square root of 20 is the square root of 20 squared. Remember, you have an invisible 2 out here, and that if you were going to write this in fraction, uh, uh, fraction exponential notation, you would have 20, this 2 would go on top of the fraction power, that 2 would go on the bottom, 2 over 2 is 1, and so you would just be left with 20. Okay, let's go on. The square root of 80 times the square root of 125. Now, I don't know if that's going to be exact or not, so let's check it out. All right, second x squared, 80. All right, and I'll hit the right arrow key, times the square root of 125. Right arrow key, enter. And we get 100. So some of these can, when it's numbers, some of them can be done on the on the uh, calculator. So 100. Next one. Eventually, they're going to get us. All right, the square root of 5 times the square root of 2. I know that's not going to work out, but let's, let's do it anyway just to prove it to you. The square root of 5 times the square root of 2. Enter. Yep, nope, that is not the kind of answer they want. Type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So, oh dear friends, we're going to have to use the product rule of um, 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 radicals, the product rule of radicals. The square root of 5 times the square root of 2, they're both radicals, so we can say the square root of 5 times 2 which is the square root of 10. And as you can see from the calculator right there, this is an irrational number. It won't give you an, an exact number like the others have. We had 20. The answer was 20 for the first one. The answer was, uh, uh, I forget what the answer was for the second one. But here, here, we don't get an exact answer. We're now getting into the realm of what we call uh, irresistible numbers. No, irrational numbers. I think they're kind of irresistible, though. All right, so here's how you put that kind of answer in. Come over here to the square root key, then type 10 underneath. There you go. Check answer. Brilliant, excellent, and on we go. I'm going to clear the calculator, clear the key press, and now we're going to look at the third root of 5 times the third root of 11. Well, they're both third roots. The cube root of 5 times the cube root of 11 is going to be, because they're both cube roots, the cube root of 5 times 11, which is going to be the cube root of 55. And that's a 3, believe it or not. So here, D is going to be our answer. And let's check our answer. Nice work. So let's move on to number 5. 
Well, here we have another one, the cube root of 2 times the cube root of 5. They're both cube roots, so we combine them. That'll be the cube root of 2 times 5, which will be the cube root of 10. Yes. You do that when, they're, when you have the same index out there, okay? You just combine them. Now, here's going to be something interesting. Now we're getting into letters, so the calculator will be of less and less value to us. We've got the fourth root of 10a times the fourth root of 3b, and so we're going to have the fourth root of 10a times 3b, which will be what? It will be the fourth root of 30 a, B. Let's put that answer in here. Now notice it's a fourth root, it's not a square root, so we're not going to use that. We are going to use the nth root tool. It's a fourth root, so I'm going to type 4 up there. Then I'm going to click underneath and write my answer, which is 30 A B. Check the answer. Yay, and we go on. Right, the square root of 121 over 144, I just happen to know that both of these are perfect squares. You'll become more familiar with them over time. Okay, square root of 121 over the square root of 144 is going to be the square root of 121 over the square root of 144. These are both perfect squares. The square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of 144 is 12. Suppose you don't know that. All right, let's put it in the calculator. Take the square root of 121. Now, if you're using a TI-83, you're going to have to put this in parentheses, but we don't need to on a TI-84. But I do have to hit the right arrow key, or I will be sunk. Okay, I'm going to say Enter. And we're not supposed to give a decimal answer. It says type an exact answer using radicals as needed. So I'm going to go to math, and I'm going to frac this. Enter, enter, and there you go. The answer is 11 twelfths. Now I'm going to try inputting this like I would if I had a TI-83 and see what happens. So second x squared, parentheses, 1, 21 divided by 144, parentheses closed, enter, math, frac, enter. Yes, I get the same answer, although on the TI-83 your answer will be a sideways fraction. You'll have 11 slash 12. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to put in a fraction. 11 over 12. Check our answer. Yes. Right, 8. 5 over 25. Oh, what to do? Oh, what to do? Well, I know what to do. Take a look at the paper. The square root of 5 over 25, whoa, 5 will go into 25. So this will be the square root of 1 fifth, which will be the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is not uh, uh, a rational number 
but the square root of 1 is. The square root of 1 is 1, so we'll have 1 over the square root of 5. Now, at the end of the semester, you won't be allowed to leave your answer like that, but this is not the end of the semester. So, I am going to answer this the way I think they would want it answered. In fact, I'm going to cheat and click right here. It, it went on to a different question. That'll teach me to cheat, won't it? All right, what can I say? It would have been 1 over the square root of 5. But now let's do this new one, and I've learned my lesson. I won't change horses in midstream, as they say. So 5 over 64 is going to be the square root of 5 over the square root of 64. And the square root of 5 is irrational. It won't break down. It's just the square root of 5. But the square root of 64 is 8. And that's your number. That's your answer. And actually, I don't believe the calculator would have helped you at all. Let's clear it. Where's the clear? There's the clear. And I'm going to clear the key presses. In here, I'm going to click on the answer box. And I'm going to make a fraction, but up here in the fraction box, in the numerator box, I'm going to put square root and then 5. And on the bottom, I'm going to put 8. And so I'll check my answer, and I'm right. So sometimes you have to actually use two tools, one tool inside another tool. 9. Oh, this could be tricky. Let's see. What you've got here, if you were doing this on paper, would be the cube root of that negative is negative 1 times 343 over 512. And so you would have the cube root of negative 1 times the cube root of 343 over, oops, cube root, cube root of 512. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. The cube root of 343, so remember how to do the cube root, but okay. We're going to go down to cube root here. And I'm going to take, uh, yeah, let's just do the whole thing. Negative 343 divided by 512 and hit the right arrow key and enter. Nope. OK. Clear. We're going to do it the right way. Doggone it. <clears throat> We're going to do what I said. The cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Um, but you could actually do that too. Let's do the whole thing. Math, cube root, negative 1, enter. See, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. So we've just taken the cube root of negative 1. Now I'm going to take the cube root of 343. So math, 4. The cube root of 343, enter, is 7. So this will be neg <coughs> negative 1 times 7 over the cube root of 512. So we'll have math 4, which is the cube root, 512, enter, and that's 8. So negative 1 times 7 eighths is negative 7 eighths. Sometimes you've just got to do it in parts. <laughs>